Hey guys, welcome back to Hong Kong. I have two kids now. Uh, my younger one was on a school trip to Taiwan, and so he flew over and joined us here in Hong Kong, and he goes to Japan tomorrow, and I'll stick around with the older one. So today, it's an eating day. We're just gonna eat everything. All right, what's the purple one, bro? You don't want the purple one? Nice sweet, po sweet yeah. potato bread? No, classic. Hot dog bread, baba bread. What's in that? Is that like lava? Peanut butter. Peanut butter, lava butter. Ooh, this is real pineapple, bro. All right. Pineapple bun. Yeah, see the Hong Kong down with so. You want one of those? We get one later. Yeah, I will get you one today, I promise. Yeah? This is a pineapple bun. It's not real pineapple, it's just sugar crusted on the top. Kind of looks like a pineapple. Ah. It's sweet. It's really good. I can get it everywhere here in Hong Kong. My favorite. Okay, guys, we're going to one of the Tim Ho Wan franchises. Tim Ho Wan is based up in Mong Kok, but we don't feel like going up there today. We're going to eat down in the IFC at the Dim Sum place. Market down by Wan Chai. I'm taking my kid over here because there's a homemade noodle place here that makes like the most amazing noodles of all different varieties. At least there was at one time. I don't know if it's still here. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one. Look at all the different noodles. It's like bok choy. What? Oh, it's like chong fan. I'm so welcome. Welcome to Hong Kong. I'm trying to send it to Bob. Like, it is cleaner than Kura sushi. But look at all the types of noodles you can get. What are those? Oh, those are like fish, no fish noodles, Drew. And then there's like the fresh... Rainbow popsicle. How many thousands of those did you have as a kid? Do you want Give me one. Is this yours? No? I don't have one. For the, for the, for the, for the nostalgia purposes. Oh my. Go ahead, take one. Connor. Okay. Rainbow popsicle. My kids love them. Hey guys, it is Sunday in Hong Kong. And Sunday is the nanny's day off. All the maids, all the domestic servants, all the helpers, they have the day off on Sunday. So down here is the big gathering for all the Filipinos. So all the Filipino nannies and maids will come down here to World White House. Uh, this is where they ship their money and goods back to the Philippines, to their families. And it's a bit of a madhouse, and it's only 10 in the morning, yeah? It's going to get much, much crazier as the day goes on. So all you hear is Tagalog down here, the language of the Philippines. Now, they're all women mostly. They've, uh, there are some men, they're mostly serving as drivers or maybe in uh, outs like gardeners and stuff. There are very few male nannies. There are a few though. Um, these women come from all over the Philippines and they can make more money here working in Hong Kong than they can working back home. So many of them leave their families behind, work here as a domestic helper and ship the money back to their families in the Philippines. Now, it's not a lot of money. Uh, these women make about 600 US dollars a month, and they work six days a week, uh, morning till bedtime. They live with their employer. The employer has to provide them with housing. That's part of the law. And uh, it's a pretty crazy life. Now, over here is the shipping area, yeah? I think. This is where they go to get all their stuff shipped back home if they're relocating back, like if their contract has expired. Well, there's also a pedicure place. They make a few extra dollars. Through here, a bit crazy. So all these red bags are in suitcases. They're getting shipped back to the Philippines. Domestic freight or international freight. Very low rate. Excuse me. Excuse me. There's a zoo to get through here. <laughs> All right, let's go up and over. Yeah, so they what they do is they buy a box. They buy like a 24 by 24 inch box. And I think it costs like 40 or 50 US dollars. 
and they can stuff as much as they want in that box and ship it back home. Yep, let's go. Up and over. <laughs> it's crazy how the international economy works. Now, some of them actually make money by shipping goods back to their families in the Philippines who resell them. So, like, they'll collect, I don't know, whatever's needed, phones, rice cookers, whatever they can find, and then ship them back to the Philippines and sell them at a profit. All right, let's go find my kids. <laughs> uh, my kids are somewhere down here. They're out running around. Hong Kong is incredibly safe. Uh, there's a very low crime rate, and street crime is basically unheard of. So, yeah, they're fine running around. So my kids are on that ferry right there, that blue one that's coming in, that's the Star Ferry. Goes back and forth, I think about 15, 10, 15 minutes. And they're docking now. It'll take them a bit to get up here. So this is City Super, one of the fancy grocery stores. It's the grab-and-go section. It's all sorts of healthy stuff. You can like grab-and-go these or onigiris or sushis. Close that up because it's cold. Salad. Uh, you can get... Now see, Sunday with the helpers away, there's no one to cook. So all the families have to cook for themselves, which usually means they just come down here and buy something pre-cooked. It's just easier that way. <laughs> Japanese groceries always have the best cooked food. Go to American grocery, it's just filled with pasta and fried everything. Oh, look at that sheep. Isn't that cute? Those are marshmallows. Marshmallow cupcake. Looks like a sheep. Oh, I bet my kid wants a cupcake. Maybe we'll go get a cupcake. Cookies. There's my kid. He's coming off the boat. The kids are right there. They made it off the boat, okay. Oh, there's another onigiri shop. Man, this stuff is everywhere. Well, this one's wrapped up. There's the kids. Oh, bro. The sugar face and uh, cinnamon roll. You guys are on autopilot, yeah? You know what you want. Honey milk. Oh, there's the cinnamon roll. They got him? What's that? Cinnamon. Oh, that was on the other side. I don't know if I want a sugar face. There's real sugar. You should have a sugar face. You have a cinnamon roll in America. So we call these sugar faces. That's what they called it as kids. Uh, we'll just split one. Yeah, split one. That's all. Save room for other stuff. I had another rainbow popsicle. We can go to Sift. You got a rainbow popsicle. Yeah. All right, let's pay. You sure? Yeah, you got another rainbow popsicle. Of course he did. All right. Bruh. How's the video? Fine. Let's see what else it is. This is like the most ridiculously overpriced food. Yes, that's 40 US bucks. This is $30 for 100 grams. That's like three ounces. It's like $10. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's 10 bucks out of the pounds. Eight. Salmon. That's so expensive. Yeah, it is. Let's go see the. 100 grams plus. Do they have the grapes? It's not bad. I'm sure they have the grapes. Yeah, I saw them myself. Where? Over here. So these are like gift. So this is $15 in strawberries. 15 US. Uh, yeah, these grapes over there are awesome. How much are they? Oh, these are cheap. 10 bucks. It's $10. This is 20 bucks. Yo, how much? How much are they? You want some? Oh, mom's calling. Hollywood Road. We've got a lot of Michelin Johns. 
same old ladies. You don't pour it in the cup. You, you, you guys like to pour in the cup? You guys think you're like three? No, this is the Watson way. <laughs> Are we going to burger shake? I don't know. We just got a milkshake, baby. Wait, you want to take yours? Fine. <laughs> so this is basically how I got my start YouTubing. I was filming myself eating noodles at this place. Mm. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. So our next stop is Shanghai Pan Fried Buns. These are like soup dumplings. They're really good. If they're fresh, let's see what he's got cooking. Chongqing Key Shanghai Pan Fried Buttons. Yeah, you say her. Parker, can you make these? Now, like some, now they fry the bottoms. They're already fried. Okay, okay. <laughs> <He's done. laughs> Alright, bro. Is, is this ours? Uh, I don't know. Probably. Okay, I'll go first. You gotta bite it. You gotta bite the corner, yeah? Mm. What are you doing? You gotta drink out the soup first, bro. You got to drink. Dude, if you don't, it squirts all over you and you get like in the hospital because it's so hot. Yes, Parker, that's cute. Because it's in the shade, bro. I'm just staying there because it's cool. <laughs> the Japanese took possession of it and turned it into like a house of torture and whatnot. Yeah, the haunted house. And then he decided he's going to renovate it, but then the government was like, you can't, it's sus. I don't know, they've gone through a lot. Yeah. It's like abandoned. They put some serious, they don't want anyone climbing around in there. Yeah, so it's said that this is haunted. Why do they not want anyone? Because this is brand new. Wow, look at that. That's a brand new place. This was built in the last five years or so. That's massive. Yeah, you remember this? No, super tree. 
I thought that was the one back there. No, this is the super tree, the giant banyan tree. Like yeah, more or less. It's really cool when it's like foggy up here. You could. You'd be in the clouds. Yeah, up here you're always in the clouds. It's gonna get better. I have more of you up here. Still can't see our house though. There's the governor's mansion, which is now the chief executive's. And then St. John's Cathedral behind it. And then Hong Kong Park, which used to be the uh, military base. And there's the Bank of China, the giant building with the X's and the ICC. Tallest building on the island, and that's the, that's the IFC. And the ICC is the tallest building in Hong Kong. Down below, you see the funicular. That is the peak tram tracks. And judging from the sound, we got one coming. And we're at May Road, and there it goes. So one tram goes down, the other tram comes up. They meet about halfway, which is just near May Road, more of my old neighborhood. Uh, I lost my kids already. They're somewhere down there. So let's go catch up with them. Oh, this is Barker Road. And this runs along the peak. Um, we looked at houses in here, apartments in here when we lived here. They were about 12 to 15,000 US dollars a month for about 150, 1,500 square feet. Don't know if the price has dropped a bit. Doubt it. So, right here is 22 Barker Road. This is the house of Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba.com. And you can see it's got electrical fence on the roof, cameras everywhere. He spent 200 million US dollars to build this house. He used to have an amazing view through these weeds, but uh, he's put a bunch of stuff there. You can't see the view. You can't see the view anymore. Look at all the weeds. This place is built like a fortress. When my kids were younger, we used to call this balance level. They try to walk on the curb without falling. And he does it. Well, almost. All right, another nice view. Those houses down there, I think, were like $100 million. Oh. There it is. That's my old house. That building with the two things on the roof. I used to live on the 25th floor of there. And it was the cheapest apartment on this entire block. <laughs> Still ridiculously expensive. So we're back down in the street market here in the Wan Chai neighborhood. Not because we uh, need any you know, stuffed squid or chicken feet or anything like that. No, we need to get our laundry. <laughs> so I uh, dumped my laundry here this morning and for 50 cents a pound, uh, wash, dried, and folded. So let's go pick it up at the Chinese laundry. Which is crowded. There we go. Bag after bag. Three people, a week and a half of clothing, all dried and folded. Now we just need a taxi. Okay, guys, so that was my Sunday in Hong Kong. It's now Monday morning. I'm in the hotel, and we're getting up and about to go eat some more. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll be in Hong Kong a few more days. We'll keep showing you some stuff around here. See you soon.